you please sit? Your Royal Highness, Your Excellency, I welcome you together with uh, the Chilean Defence Attaché and all who've come to this annual wreath laying at the grave of Admiral Lord Cochrane on Chilean Navy Day. Today, <coughs> excuse me, today we remember and celebrate the life of an extraordinary man with radical principles and passionate energy. Hated by some and admired by many others, he needed courage in all things. It was always the people of Chile who knew and loved him best. An outstanding naval officer, he was not only an admiral of the Chilean fleet who secured a victory against Spain, but also a man com committed to justice and reform. He consistently set an example. Cochrane died in 1860, and here's a description of his funeral from Donald Thomas's biography. The Queen had no intention of allowing one of the last and most gallant heroes of the Napoleonic Wars to pass in obscurity from the scene. On the 6th of November, it was announced that he was to be buried among the nation's honoured dead in Westminster Abbey. The cortege set out from Kensington for the Abbey. The hearse was followed by a host of carriages bearing the Chilean and Brazilian ambassadors, admirals of the fleet, the old Lord Chancellor, and men who'd served under Cochrane's command. The coffin was borne to its place by two admirals, five captains, and the Brazilian ambassador, the choir singing an anthem specially composed by John Goss, organist of St. Paul's. O oh Lord God, the strength of my heart, thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. It was characteristic of Cochrane's life that when guards of honour stood at his tomb, they were Chilean and Brazilian, rather than the representatives of his own country. Westminster Abbey was crowded for the funeral by those who were at one with the words of the triumphal concluding anthem, Handel's, his body is buried in peace, but his memory shall live forever. We thank God today for the life of this remarkable man and for the friendship that exists between our two countries. In the midst of the great challenges of our own day, we commit ourselves once more to the cause of justice that was so important to him. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations.
O give thanks unto the Lord, <clears throat> for he is gracious, and his mercy endureth forever. Let them give thanks whom the Lord hath redeemed and delivered from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They went astray in the wilderness out of the way, and found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. So they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them forth by the right way, that they might go to the city where they dwelt. O oh, that men would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness, and declare the wonders that he doeth for the children of men. For he satisfieth the empty soul, and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. They that go down to the sea in ships, and occupy their business in great waters, these men see the works of the Lord, and his wonders in the deep. For at his word the stormy wind ariseth, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They are carried up to the heaven, and down again to the deep. Their soul melteth away because of the trouble. They reel to and fro, and stagger like drunken man, and are at their wit's end. So when they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, he delivereth them out of their distress. For he maketh the storm to cease, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad, because they are at rest. And so he bringeth them unto the haven where they would be. O oh, that men would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness, and declare the wonders that he doeth for the children of men, that they would exalt him also in the congregation of the people, and praise him in the seat of the elders. Let us pray. O God, who art the lover of justice and peace, give thy grace, we humbly beseech thee, to those who now guide the counsels of our two nations and lead them by thy Holy Spirit, that by word and deed they may promote thy glory and set forth peace and goodwill among men, through Jesus Christ our Lord. O eternal Lord God, who alone spreadest out the heavens and rulest the raging of the sea, be pleased to receive into thy protection all those who go down to the sea in ships and occupy their business in great waters. Preserve them both in body and soul. Prosper their labors with good success in all times of danger. Be their defense and bring them unto the haven where they would be, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal God, fount and source of all authority and wisdom, hear our prayers for Elizabeth, our Queen, and for the President of the Republic of Chile. Grant them grace as symbols of loyalty and unity for all their people. Inspire their governments with vision, understanding, and integrity. Give to the nation's legislatures and judiciaries wisdom and skill, imagination and energy, that all may live in peace and harmony, truth and prosperity. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Let us each in our own language use the prayer that our Saviour Christ hath taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
be amongst you and remain with you always.